Welcome back to the RightWave Audio community. My name is John, and for this video, we are starting a new RightWave Audio series for home theater amplifiers that are available in 2022. And I thought, what better place to start is with the Monolith series from Monoprice. And this is a very popular series that are out there that brings a high value, low cost, uh, high performance amplifier uh, to the home theater applications. And we're gonna look at every model in their portfolio. And we'll follow this up with similar videos with other brands like Emotiva and Outlaw Audio, uh, et cetera, as well as the um, amplifiers that are available from like Denon and Marantz and Yamaha to complement their AV receivers and processors that they make. But for mono prices, monolith range, this is a range they introduced, I believe around 2016. Uh, so they're fairly new to the amplifier market, but they got it in a good way and they did partner with ATI who I understand designs these amplifiers for them and they do a very good job. And of course, ATI is also, you know, designs for uh, very high end amplifiers as well as, as for, for mono price. The models that we'll include in this are their 2X, their 3X, their 5X, 7X, the 8125X, the 8250 x Those two models are brand new this year. And the 9X and the 11X, of course, the Xs stand for more channels as you uh, go up with the numbers. So uh, these range from $1,100 up to $3,000 and represent, as I said, good value for your amplifiers. Let's start by answering the question, why external amplifiers? Well, there's two use cases. One, naturally, if you buy an AV processor separate, it has no amplification, so naturally you need to add on amplifiers to power each one of those speakers. And of course, you have a design decision to make. Do I try to get everything, all the channels I need in one amplifier, or only a couple, or do I do monoblocks for everything, which would be the far extreme. But so let's say you have a 13 channel uh, setup out there and you want to do this, you know, do you try to find a 13 channel amplifier? Well, those are pretty hard to find. The monolith range only goes up to 11 channels. Uh, or you know, do a combination uh, of, of uh, different models. Do you, do you power the, uh, do you power the, do you power the front channels with more uh, gusto than you do on your rear or your height channels? So those are things to consider, but we're to walk ourselves through this range and see that there's a little bit for everybody. You can pick, put these together in any combination you want to ultimately build the system that you're looking for. And of course, you don't have to use mono price for everything that you're going to be powering. You can mix and match these with other brands and models as well. But let's just focus on mono price for right now and their monolith range. So their first entry is a two channel model. Now what you'll see off the bat here is the looking at the back of this, these are not expandable, uh, configurable by the homeowner. Uh, there's not modules that you can take in and out of these like you see in other ranges. These are fixed as they come from the factory. This mono price, you'll notice that not only is it called 2X as it shows on the front of the, the unit, but it also has a model number associated with it. And I think they just take next number here at, at mono price. This is the 15595 model. So that's the exact model of this one. This was launched in 2016 when they got into the market. This gives you two channels at 200 watts. We'll get into details about how that specification um, was measured. And this gives you an option of RCA or uh, balanced XLR connections, which is adjustable by a switch. 
And it's a quite simple of unit. There's no power meters, just a blue button on the front, which is not defeatable, which is a problem with some of you who uh, don't want to be distracted from that uh, by that with uh, watching a movie. I, I don't seem to mind uh, having the blue buttons uh, with my Emotivas, which is done very similarly. Looking inside the 2X, we see that this uses a toroidal transformer. And, uh, you know, it comes in with a little power board on, on the left-hand side as you're looking at the slide here with two pow dedicated power modules, one for each channel. And so this is the 2X, and it looks very clean in here, and I really like the design. Moving up to the 3X, and let's get same cosmetics, and we're just adding another set of inputs and outputs to, to the model. And this is a 3 by 200 watt. And again, you've got the XLR balance as well as the RCA inputs. And looking inside, there's not much change except for one additional power module. And you can see there's three instead of two. And you'll see this theme continued. And this is the 15594 model from Mono Price. And you'll see as we move up to the 5X, it just continues on the theme. So now we see five sets of inputs and outputs on the back of the monolith. You can see the difference here as you move into five channels is the power supply. Uh, the toroids are not only placed differently, you now have two of them. So we have two toroidal power supplies that, that are um, they're powering this amplifier. So you get five channels at 200 watts. Again, this was out in 2016. Uh, this one is, you know, with each one of these, you're going up in price. You know, we started with the two channel, which was $1,100. The three channel, which is $1,300. $200 more for an additional channel. And then you move up to the 5X, which is $1,600. So for two additional channels, you're paying $300 more. And then finally, when we move up to the 7X, this is the 14566 model. This is seven channels, and now you've got seven across the back, seven sets. Again, seven by 200 on the power. And we, they can actually fit seven of these individual power modules. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven inside this. And again, it's with the dual toroidal transformers. And this is $1,850. So for another $250, you get those additional amplifiers. And I'm going to show you the cost per channel later on in the presentation here. They do some things a little differently when they get up to the 9X. And you can see the layout starts to change a little bit. Uh, you can see that the first three channels, and they've got it labeled right, center, and left, the speaker binding posts are directly below them. But when you get to the other three, which they label left surround, uh, height um, left one, and height left two, and then they got another row right surround, right height one, right height two. So they got two rows of inputs, and then they've got uh, two rows of binding posts to get a total of nine. And when you look inside of this, you start to scratch your heads and say, well, there isn't nine modules inside the 9X, the 33306 model. Uh, you can count these and you count one, two, three, four, five, six. So what is going on here? Well, the first three are putting out 200 watts each for the, the, the final three modules they essentially cut them in half, and each one is doing two channels, or they're giving the, each one of these modules the responsibility to power two channels, which means you cut your wattage output out in half, so you end up with six channels at 100 watts, which are being supplied by three of these similar modules. 
So that's where the hell they come up with 9. So how are they going to do 11? Well, let's take a look at 11. Very similar to, to 9 on the back. This is the 33307. Um, by the way, the 9 was $2,150, and the 11 channel is $2,500. So uh, you get a little bit of a jump in cost there. You, you have to spend $350 more to get the 11 channels. So this is putting out three channels at 200 watts and eight channels at 100 watts. So like the nine channel, you don't get more of these modules in here. They actually fill in the second, uh, the center space here with another one of those modules. So now you have a total of seven modules in here. So for the first three, those are putting out the full 200 watt power. And the, for the last four, those are divided into two channels. So that cuts it in half to 11. So you end up with the last four, each doing two channels. So it gives you eight channels uh, on the lower power rating. And that's how they come up with 11. So this is the most populated amplifier from Monolith. And uh, this one came out in 2018 with the nine channel model. So all the two through seven came out in 2016 and nine and 11 channel models came out in 2018. Well, they introduced two new models this year in 2022, about the May timeframe. Now these are different. All the other modules, models I've already shown you are class AB amplifiers and they have those big toroidal transformers in it. The new ADEX, which is model 42565, uh, sells for $2,000 has eight channels at 100 watts. And these, instead of being class AB amplifiers, these are Hypex N-Core modules. There's eight of them. So each one of these have their own power supply. So instead of the tor toroid, each one of these have their own power supply and they're class D modules. So they're gonna perform a little differently. Uh, you know, They'll use consume less power, they'll be lighter, uh, they'll give off less heat. And I don't have an inside picture of these modules or these units, the 8125X, uh, but this module does um, you know, have these eight of these modules in so we can use our imagination. They're probably stacked up one through eight inside of it. And we have another variant of this eight channel, which is the 82. 50x and you immediately see something different here there's actually two IEC power connections on the back and so there's you you takes two wall outlets to feed this uh, this is similar to a unit they put out that ATI designed for outlaw audio that had two two power cords going into it so these use a little different N Hypex N-Core module in here that, that can put out more wattage. Um, so this will give you 200 watts into the eight channels. So each one of these channels has one of these larger, you can kind of count the, the capacitors on here that the, the um, 8125 had two large capacitors. These have four large capacitors. So you can see how it's kind of doubling the size. It's a little larger, et cetera. So this is the lineup. And if we look at them pretty much with the covers off, except for the two models, which I can only show you the Hypex module, but it gives you the sense the differences between the 2X, 5X, uh, it gives you the difference between the 2X, 3X, 5X, 7X, 9X, 11X, and the two new eight channel models and you, you, can, you can see how they're making the space. You can see that the two and the three channels models aren't quite as deep as the, the other two. And that is a, a, you know, a nice little overview of that whole line. Now let's get into the specifications. So first we're gonna look at the inputs. So what we've noticed here is each model uh, has 
RCA and XLR inputs, except for the two new ones. One thing I'll note here is none of these amplifiers are fully balanced. Now they have balanced inputs, but they're not carrying that balance out to how it connects up to the speakers and all the way through end to end. Uh, there's a few models out there in the world that do so. Uh, it is kind of rare, and, and, but there is some benefits to go fully balanced. Just have XLR um, inputs. And so these match the number of channels that this, each of these have amplifiers for. There is also a difference in the impedance. So we can essentially divide this whole model lineup from what was announced 2016, 2018, those six initial mod module models, plus the two, and uh, from the two new ones, uh, having a slightly different specs than the, the six older models. So we look at the impedance for the older models. That is, has an input impedance of 28 kilo ohms versus the two new ones are 47 kilo ohms. Now, each of these models, this is the one thing they have in common, only have one trigger input. There's no trigger output. So if you want to daisy chain these things and turn one on after the other, uh, you're going to need to use another output from the back of your receiver or processor or some way to split that out so you can trigger all your amplifiers on at once. The input sensitivity is rated at 8 ohms for all the early models at 1.6 volts versus the two new ones, the Class D ones, are uh, 1.4. 456 volts and 2.07 volts for the 200 watt version of the product. Now for the two new D classes they also rate it at 4 ohms on the input sensitivity at 1.37 volts and 2.07 volts. So the amplifiers in here of course the channel counts match the number of inputs they have but what I did is I calculated the cost per channel uh, what model price advertises on their website. They do sell direct, uh, model price does. So uh, the color code of orange, this is the most expensive unit per channel. So it's going to cost you more for the 2x than it would the 3x or the 5x or the 7x per channel. I think if you really want to go more than two channels, you're better off and much greater value buying it all at once. So I, if you think you're going to use this amplifier to do, let's say, your five-channel base layer or your seven-channel base layer, go get the five or the seven-channel uh, versus the two or the three because you're going to move from $550 per channel cost down to $250 on the channel cost. And you're not sacrificing the specifications, and we'll see this later. All of these give you a 28 dB voltage gain, except for the Class D models, which are 25.7 dBs. And they all support a load impedance, the speaker impedance that you're going to attach this up to, between 4 and 16 ohms that you will support. So if we go, this is going to prove the point that the 7x is a really good value when we look at the actual output specifications. Everything um, is doing 200 watt output for the models introduced up until this year. The When you get to the 9 and the 11x, they're only giving the 200 watts on the first three channels because you remember it's dividing that using that modules for two outputs. Uh, in which at point it drops down for the second group of channels, 4 through 9 and 4 through 11, uh, to 100 watts, respectively for the 9x and the 11x products. But what you'll notice here is the frequency range it's measuring at is all 20 to 20,000 hertz. They're done measuring it for a 0.03% total harmonic distortion. And they're all putting 120 dB signal-to-noise ratio out. 
I, I see a couple things in that while the nine is the lowest cost um, of the early models, the class AB models at $250 per channel, I think you're better off with the 7X because you're driving all those channels out to 200 watts uh, for all seven, and it's only costing you $14 more uh, per channel to do so. I think that's a good upgrade uh, to get to get that performance across all the channels. But if your mix and matches don't come out, you know, the really where you need it, and you don't really need the extra power for certain channels, which is often the case, maybe the 9X and 11X are also good values. The lowest cost model, the absolute lowest cost model, is the uh, 8150, the new one from this year with the Class D modules. So if you want lighter um, uh, units, you might be interested in the Class D that gives off less heat as well, and it's got a good price point. So these really becomes your choice. I don't think there's bad choices in here. Uh, I just think from the ripe wave audio perspective, we don't mind the heat and the weight. Uh, we go for the 7X model, uh, but any of these are really good choices. Now let's look at the final set of specifications here, height, width, depth, weight. Now we've done this in, in uh, US customary units as well as in metric. The heaviest unit units are the 7, 9, and 11 channel models. 93.2 pounds or 42.3 kilograms. The new Class D brings that weight down so much. Uh, we're now we're at for an 8 channel unit, which would be very close to the 9 channel or the 7, somewhere in between there. And uh, that's 28.2 pounds or 12.8 kilograms. So a huge difference in the weight when you go to the Class D uh, units. One thing that may concern some of you is none of these out, uh, have input power for 240 volts. They all have 120 volt inputs. I'm not aware of an international version of these amplifiers. So this may discount these if you're in other countries and do not want to do the step-down transformer beforehand. Um, and here we've noted here where toroids are used versus being on the, the Hypex modules and where there's multiple toroids used in the unit. So this really gives you a good summary. We've added to the RipeWave database a new tab. So Patreons have access to this database. We've added in the monolith. We will be adding in the other amplifier ranges as we go here. So this database is growing every week. So what is your feedback on this? Oh, you know, how would you select out the right channel mix for you and, and your situation? You know, do you like the way that Monolith Mono Price has um, gone about this? Is are you to prefer the class AB versus the class D amplifier versions? And is fully balanced an important feature for you? Uh, I do think that there's some advantages of it, um, but it's not everything. Uh, but of course, we have our Emotiva XPA ones that are fully balanced. So uh, we're living with that right now. Your comments would be greatly appreciated. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to this RipeWave Audio community and be sure to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.